When your house is firebombed in an apparent political hit job designed to intimidate you to quit your YouTube channel, I gotta admit, there are a few downsides. Apart from being homeless and in constant fear of your life. One of them is that it leads me to making a lot of jokes about being firebombed, which if I was watching this channel, I'd be so over me. Okay, we get it, you were firebombed. Shut up and do funny voices again. Another downside is I have to deal with heaps more bloody foreigners. Yeah, you heard me. Go back to where you came from. Before the fire, my audience had to be one of the most concentrated Australian audiences on YouTube. I mean, look at that ratio. Isn't that beautiful? Brings your tea to my eye. But after the fire, Got an influx of new subs from overseas, as if I didn't have enough on my mind. Now I have to pick new curtains and I have to think of ways to keep you Yanks happy. But I'm gonna have to try, so sorry Australians. Welcome to the new and improved American Friendly Friendly Geordies. And I'm proud to be an American. Seppos, you're in for a treat. If there's one thing Americans can't get enough of, it's videos detailing niche regional Australian politics. Now hear me out, Australian politics might not shape the globe in the same way your politics does, but we do have our upsides. We have very, very funny politicians. That's right, even funnier than President Ford. Sydney is our largest city. It even has an international reputation for dodginess. Look at this, no city in the world can rival Sydney's tolerance for organized crime. That is a quote from an American professor. See, we are on the world stage. To be honest, I'm glad we're known for organized crime. Not unorganized crime, like every US city thanks to the Democrats. Because with organized crime comes hilarious people. New South Wales is the largest state in the country. It's where Sydney's located. I'm in that state, by the by. Uh, it has a particularly rich crop of ethically stunted freaks running it for a very long time. And since we have a state election coming up, Trying to think of a way of incorporating the new audience. Um, a state election is like that thing you voted for to get Arnold Schwarzenegger in office, except in Kangaroo Place. Oh, so the Oscars. But he wasn't in Kangaroo Jack. You are my best friend, Billy. I'm not Billy, mate. Whatever your name is. Look, I've got to do a real estate.com ad. So I thought today we'd go through some of the highlights of the past 10 years of political wins in New South Wales. And by wins, I mean reasons I can't believe we still have the same fucking government. In 2011, there was a state election. The Labor Party, the party centered around labor unions, so the good party, had been the ruling party of New South Wales for 16 years. Despite being generally a very good governing party, it was booted out under a cloud of corruption scandals. Pretty much because one member of the Legislative Council, the equivalent of state senator, a man called Eddie Obeid, was basically running his family's crime organization from parliament with hilarious schemes. Such as... Hey, Stitch, why don't you award these epic leases to these particular cafes? You or your family don't happen to have any financial interests in these particular cafes, do you, Eddie? No? Shut the f*** up! I've been looked inside that with a microscope up my ass, and everything is clean as far as I'm concerned! That last part is verbatim, by the way, and... Hey, Stitch, why don't you award these hectic mining licenses here? Hey, that's funny, you, uh... You own that land, don't you, Eddie? Um, uh, 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 you're looking uh, heaps pretty today, miss. Do you need some cheap makeup? My cousin's Napoleon. And perhaps my favorite. No, f you. I'm not letting in any f Muslims into the Labour Party. Based Lebanese Christian boys only? New South Wales produces many characters like Eddie. The man had multiple mansions, plots of land, drove luxury cars, and most baller of all, was a cabbie before entering politics. This was actually his excuse for explaining away how he accumulated his wealth. Bruh, I did heaps of shifts in that cab. I got like mad tips cause I'm a winning personality, f So yeah, in 2011, the New South Wales Labor Party was defeated in a landslide to be replaced by the Liberal National Party. The party whose power base is corporate Australia. And it wasn't long until New South Wales found that they had replaced a cancer cell in the Labor Party with full-blown leukemia. And for a while, it was nowhere near as hilarious. We didn't just, I don't know, like, Two or three years though, an investigation by the New South Wales Anti-Corruption Commission, ICAC, revealed the Liberal Party had been accepting hundreds of thousands of dollars in secret illegal donations from property developers, most of which was in the lead up to the 2011 election. In that election, they were campaigning on integrity. That led to the resignation of over 10 Liberal MPs, and it gets better. 
In 2014, the first Liberal Premier we had in 16 years, Barry O'Farrell, he was all but forced to resign after he denied under oath to the New South Wales Independent Commission Against Corruption that he had received a $3,000 bottle of wine as a gift from a man who was a business partner of Eddie O'Bead's son under investigation by ICAC. Then ICAC found the thank you note signed by Barry O'Farrell. The next Premier, Mike Baird, quit after just three years as he was dogged by the nickname Casino Mike. This was due to the lockout laws introduced in 2014 after Sydney did what Aussies do best, maybe a bit too well, alcohol fuel violence. These lockout laws made it illegal to keep your licence venue in the CBD open past 3am and locked out new patrons from entering after 1.30am. The only places excluded from these laws were... The casinos, the most violent venues in Sydney. Look, it wasn't all bad as Mike Baird's resignation ushered in a new comedy renaissance for me specifically. It was a dark age for koalas. Gladys Berejiklian became Premier and John Barillaro became Deputy Premier. This is probably a good time to mention that along with the corruption and shit, the Liberals also weren't great at governing in general. One of their crowning achievements at this time was privatising our electricity grid, which is so incredibly short-sighted and is going to deprive future state governments of serious revenue. But more importantly, when they sold it off, they got conned. Like some Logan Paul fan buying into Crypto Zoo. They were so keen to make the deal, they didn't care what they could lose. They revealed their asking price too early. There was no evidence they set a reserve price. And because of this, the New South Wales Auditor General found that they had lost up to $610 million. And they're still here today, like Lionel Hutz, boasting about their credentials. IFM investors, I was just going through your asset portfolio and I couldn't help but overhear that you need an electricity grid. Of course, being a key revenue producer for New South Wales, the price will be eye-wateringly significant. We pay $8 for the night and you can take two popsicles out of the freezer. Three. Two. Okay, two. And I get to keep this old birdcage. Done. Still got it. Anyway, that was just a little detour to point out that along with being crooked, the New South Wales government is also just incompetent. Because honestly, I could forgive a little bit of corruption here and there if they were doing the right things, like outright banning privatisation like New South Wales Labor is proposing. But dodgy and shitty governing, that combo's a bit too far. No one more so personified this mix than John Barillaro. Perhaps John Barillaro's most distinguished achievement, judged by me, is repealing the Native Vegetation Act, leading to a 1,300% increase in land clearing in a state already facing one of the worst extinction crises in the world. That or threatening to blow up his own government over the rights to kill koalas. And kind of getting his way on it. Giving a million bucks to a flying car company, that was a classic. But just like other coalition legends before him, not only was he great at governing, he was really great at doing shit for himself. We expose how before politics, his family made hundreds of thousands of dollars when the Queenbeard Italian Club went out of business. Not only that, got the terror police to get a warrant to arrest me and actually arrested and charged my producer. All charges were dropped, by the way. Sued me for defamation during the greatest crisis in New South Wales history, because I guess him being upset over being called Mario was more important than making sure remote towns weren't going without supplies. What a bunch of dickheads, eh? And then who could forget him quitting, blaming me, going to work for a property development company connected to one of the most violent crime families in Australian history. And if that wasn't enough, gifting himself a job he created for himself with a six-figure taxpayer-funded salary as trade commissioner in New York. See, I told you I'd find a way to marry my two audiences together. Hey, USA, just so you feel right at home like that toilet going in the opposite direction, here's some classic American humor. I was f***ing this chick in the ass. She said, the way you move your dick is racist. I was like, this bitch is not going to like the color of my cunt. Now, where were we? Oh yes, we had other legends go down, such as Liberal MP John Sudoti, who ICAC found corrupt after he attempted to use his office to influence Canada Bay Council into making planning decisions that would benefit his family's property interests, i.e. Oi, Stooch, I think it would be heaps mad if you changed the floor space ratio on this particular property here. Your family doesn't have interests in these properties, do they, John? Oh, bringing my family into this. I can take the slings and arrows. I asked for this life, but to bring in my loved ones whose only crime is loving floor space ratio, that is dog. You have Liberal MP, now independent Gareth Ward, who was awaiting trial on sexual assault charges. Nationals MP Michael Johnson, who had quit 
after it was uncovered that he was sexting during Parliament and it was alleged under parliamentary privilege that he raped a sex worker, this government has been falling over itself from day one, run by some of the most self-interested and incapable cretins in the country. Really, I'm barely scratching the surface too. This is just the high profile shit, which leads me to perhaps the most shocking corruption scandal if you're an idiot in the press and you basically work on who's personally nice to you, which is the premier after Mike Baird, Gladys Berejiklian, the one who made it her thing to be Miss Goody Two Shoes. She was undone after the Corruption Commission played phone taps that revealed her secret relationship with disgraced and corrupt Liberal MP Daryl Maguire. I think of him like Willie Loman from Death of a Salesman if his business was dreaming up shitty ploys to get Chinese money. Three, four, three. The hat trick. Three premiers. What the f is New South Wales? Brazil? I mean, our land clearing rates are pretty similar. May as well be, if you've ever been to Bondi, there's so many f***ing Brazilians there. I'm glad my house burned down. Now I can go live with my Yugoslav brethren in Fairfield, located in Sydney's western suburbs. The Balkans of the Southern Hemisphere. Sorry, I really need to emphasize this point. New South Wales has had three of these premiers go down under clouds of corruption. A deputy premier publicly proclaimed he's quitting over a YouTube beef and then months later, awarding himself a dodgy taxpayer funded six figure salary in New York. With a record like this, do you really think it's smart to give another coalition government a chance? People say Victoria voting for Dan is like, um, Stockholm syndrome. Maybe. But voting for the Liberals in New South Wales after a decade of that is like insisting on only dating furries, getting shocked and disgusted when they force you to poo in a nappy to please them, but still never dating anyone normal like a Warhammer fan. Alright, maybe that wasn't the best analogy, but you get the point. Actually, f you, that was an amazing analogy, actually. Look, I'll be honest, the current Premier Dob Perrottet is probably the best of the lot. As an avid Kanye West fan, there's something that really speaks to me about that man. Must be the Christianity. But yeah, as a side note, the revelations about Dom Perrottet dressing up as a Nazi reek of a political hit job from factional rivals over Dom taking on the gambling lobby. That being said, would you trust a party so divided? Anyway, to the new American subs, that's what a normal 10 minute video on this channel looks like. But to just ease you in, f you, rub one out on the subscribe button, yeah. Yeah, so we've got some big videos coming up actually that might be interesting for Americans. We're working on a very large one detailing CIA interference in Australian politics. Ah! We got a Patreon, sign up for early access to Friday's videos.